welcome back in this section we are going to focus on aws service named elastic block store or ebs so for our eks cluster the applications running in our eks cluster needs a persistent storage and for persistent storage in aws eks we can use the service named ebs and for managing these EBS services, EBS volumes in AWS from EKS cluster, we need something called EBS CSI driver. So let's understand that on a high level. So why do we need to use EBS CSI driver in EKS cluster? So EBS CSI driver container storage interface allows EKS clusters to manage the life cycle of our EBS volumes for persistent volumes in Kubernetes. So we will be able to create the EBS volumes or resize the volumes or delete the volumes. All these things we can do using Kubernetes manifest deployed inside the Kubernetes cluster. So using those things itself, we will be able to manage these EBS volumes. So EBS CSI driver will be the key thing which we need to install or configure on our EKS cluster to do that. So this EBS CSI driver, we have two deployment options to do that in our AWS EKS cluster. So one is managing the EBS CSI driver self-managed add-on. So this is one option. And another one is managing the EBS CSI driver as an EKS add-on. So this EKS add-on feature for EBS CSI driver is very recently added like almost like a month or before and we can also do that and we are going to use both options and learn both options and with EKS add-on as on today we have multiple limitations and it's in the preview mode feature but it's the same thing for installation there is no issue right. So that's the reason we are going to also automate that using Terraform. So with managing the EBS CSA driver using self add-on is nothing but you are going to install the EBS CSA driver using Terraform plus Helm provider. So using Helm, you will be able to install this add-on. So we are going to use the Terraform Helm provider to do that for managing it as a self-managed add-on. And for adding it as a EKS add-on, there will be a EKS add-on resource in Terraform for this and we are going to use that. First, we will implement using self-managed add-on so that it will be available as a fully featured functionality and we can test the resize and then retain all those options from EBS volume perspective. And after that, we'll also see this EKS add-on feature installation also using Terraform. And let's see what happens from architectural perspective if we install this EBS CSI driver. So whenever we install this EBS CSI driver in our EKS cluster, so inside the cube system namespace, it is first going to create the EBS CSI Kubernetes service account. And we know that the Kubernetes pods, whatever those are going to run for EBS volumes, right? So means like they need the access to the EBS volume to create, delete and update EBS volumes, which means the IRSA concept which we learned in our previous section comes into the picture, which means so I am policy with EBS permissions and I am role with action as STS web identity for federated authentication and also STS will generate the temporary credentials to access our EBS APIs to create, delete or resize our EBS volumes. So that whole concept comes into the picture and an IAM role will be created associating with the IAM policy to access the EBS volumes to create, delete and resize the full access to the EBS. And that role ARN will be annotated with this respect to EBS CSI Kubernetes service account. So that from Kubernetes itself, the pods running, whatever related to CSI controller pods, so those whenever they act, use this service account, they will be able to manage the EBS volumes. So after service account in Kubernetes, there will be one more deployment happens whenever we install this CSI driver, which is nothing but EBS CSI controller and it is of type Kubernetes deployment and it is going to create the pods. So which 
will be able to create, update or delete EBS volumes. So now this CSI controller is the key thing which will be able to handle our EBS volumes because this will be added, this will have the means like this pods whatever the CSI controller is going to create will be having the service account CSI KHS service account created for EBS. So now another important thing is so how we are going to create these volumes. So that's a different part here we are only installing the CSI driver but what happens here is in our next demos we are going to see that so we'll create a Kubernetes storage class and we'll also create a Kubernetes persistent volume claim and then in our respective application maybe a MySQL or any other persistent application MySQL DB so we are going to use this persistent volume claim so that it will be able to go ahead and then create the volumes and use those things. So this Kubernetes storage class and volume claims from Kubernetes are going to be in relation with this EBS CSI controller so that this CSI controller the request from this whatever you create the storage class and persistent volume claim so these will be in communication with CSI controller to create the EBS volumes. So there the logic lies but we really don't need to go into such deep. So if we want to create persistent disks in our EKS cluster on a high level we need to understand that we need to install the EBS CSI driver. After that we can define a Kubernetes storage class and create a Kubernetes persistent volume claim and then move on with using that volume claim in our respective application deployment Kubernetes manifest and then we will be able to get the access to these respective EBS volumes that's all. So now let's move on. So what are we going to learn? So or what are the changes from our Terraform manifest perspective for EKS cluster? So which we have already done in our IRSA demo we need to ensure that C601 and C602 related to IAM OIDC connect provider is present for us and this already completed. And now the next thing is the key thing related to 0 to EBS Terraform manifest. In section 14 EBS CSI install Kubernetes storage. So you are going to have something called 0 to EBS Terraform manifest. So here C1, C2, C3 are and C3, 0 to these four files are going to be standard ones. C1 will have the versions.tf where you will have the remote state storage and remote state locking related information which you need to update which is nothing but terraform.tf state file location in your S3 bucket and also your DynamoDB table name and you also need to go ahead and then create that DynamoDB table. And C2 remote state data source we already know we will have the information about our 01 EKS cluster related terraform.tf state file and C301 and C302 are generic variables and local values which we use standard for all our projects here where how to name your resources hr hyphen stack hyphen eks cluster something like that right so and also the region where you are creating these resources so those information which we are going to use and those are same as our 01 eks cluster so same files you can use here and next comes the key important thing which is c401 eps csi data source so this is very very important so inside this we are going to use a concept called Terraform HTTP data source. So what does this HTTP data source do, right? So EBS CSI IAM role related information is stored in a GitHub, in the EBS CSI driver GitHub. So that file, this HTTP data source will be able to download for us. And then when you reference that in the IAM policy in C402, so you will be able to directly reference that value in your IAM policy so that IAM policy with what all information for CSI IAM role is there that will get created and after that you will create the IAM role with action as assume role with web identity and next thing is C403 which is EBS CSI Helm provider. So here we are going to define the Helm provider. So how we have defined the Kubernetes provider it will be more or less 
similar like you need to create the helm provider also in the similar way why because kubernetes provider or helm provider they need the access to your eks cluster to provision your resources that said so both will be same from configuration perspective related to eks cluster authentication the next thing is going to be install ebs csi driver using helm resource so using the helm release terraform resource we are going to configure it to install the ebs csi driver related configurations and finally you are going to define the ebs csi outputs so this completes this section of installing the csi driver using self managed add on with terraform helm provider so let's go ahead and then practically implement this section so i'll see you in the next lecture until then bye bye thank you